What is up, bros? Damos here today with some legit season two leveling tips. Before you begin the game, you need to figure out what difficulty is going to be most efficient for you. It's kind of like globally accepted across the D3 community right now that hard difficulty consistently is the most uh, or is the most efficient because of the difficulty increase relative to the experience bonus. So if we look at this chart on the Bounty website, you look at normal mode. The mobs have 100% health, and again. They give you 0% extra XP bonus, so it's like a one-on-one -on -one ratio. It's 100% extra bonus experience. And then when it gets bumped up to hard, it's 200% bonus health. And then you get the 75% experience bonus, so it's like 175 extra bonus experience. So globally, or just, just in general, hard is the most efficient. But keep in mind, this is relative to your character and the gear that you have. So the gear that I have and the gear that, let's say, fucking Uncle Tom in the corner has, uh, we're not going to be clearing stuff at the same rate. Um, so what is efficient for me is what might not be efficient for him. So let's say, for example, Uncle Tom has a level like five white item and I have a level five legendary item. At this point, when I get this level five legendary item, uh, when I'm level five, it's going to give me a huge damage boost temporarily. So what I would want to do to benefit from that is like leave the game after I complete my bounties and bump it up to like say master difficulty. Usually you want to avoid expert difficulty because of health increase relative to the experience bonus. So if you look at the, if you look at the transition from hard to expert, it's 120% extra health, but only 25% bonus experience. That doesn't really make sense. So try to avoid expert difficulty. Uh, play on hard. If you get a really good drop, bump it up to uh, master difficulty temporarily. And then once it starts going too slow, then bump it down to hard. And you're kind of like asking your head right now, like, what the hell do you mean efficient? So first off, uh, keep in mind the amount of time it takes to transverse through the area. So just your movement speed. So make sure you have max movement speed. Also, how many hits it takes to kill mobs. So if it's taking you 20 hits to kill a mob on master difficulty, you're spending 15 minutes in master difficulty. 15 minutes every single time master to kill, them, kill a mob and you're only spending three minutes walking around that's probably not efficient you want to be walking around and then you want to spend very 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 limited time actually killing mobs you know you might want to be one two three hitting mobs if it's taking any more than that that's probably not efficient you probably should bump it down a difficulty or something yeah I'd probably bump it down a difficulty so the next thing is creating the game. Uh, you will be leveling on adventure mode. I definitely recommend adventure mode. Then we'll put on hard difficulty when you make this game originally. Uh, there's a couple things that you do as soon as you start off at level one on seasons. Adventure mode will be unlocked when you start season two. So don't think you're gonna have to do campaign mode. Um, so this is a nifty little trick. Um, your Templars are super bros. If you go into their inventory, they have these items, right? Right off the bat, you can get an item upgrade that doubles your damage output. Three to eight, right? And then your Enchantress also has another item for you. Another dagger, wow. So we just, we just more than doubled our damage right off the bat from not even killing anything. And that's, that's, thank, that's thank you Templar bro, thank you very much. Uh, next thing you wanna keep in mind is utilizing vendors as you're going through the game. At around like level eight, uh, vendors will start spawning rings and amulets. There's a vendor in Act 3 right here. His name is Fence. Fence the Fencer. And he has, uh, he, he's able to drop rings and amulets or sell rings. So go check him out. And what you're going to be looking for at this point is uh, a ring that has XX to, or basically average damage range. He's not selling rings right now because I'm too low level. So it doesn't, hasn't unlocked yet. So Fence. Try to get something like this, a socket with damage range rolls. It'll increase your DPS quite substantially. And then also there's another spot in Act 1 on Adventure Mode to search for this. And that guy is right down here. There's another fence. There's another fence. So there's fences in Act 1, Act 3. Search there when you hit around level 8 for rings. And it'll, it'll pretty much double your damage again. Then another thing to keep in mind when you're leveling is crafting. Make sure you're leveling up your blacksmith. The gold that you get from leveling and the materials that you get, rank up your blacksmith. At level 45, you will be able to craft a level 60 weapon and be able to get reduced level requirement on it. One thing that's kind of uh, notable is one of the secondary attributes on your weapon, if you could get it as a CC effect, it'll greatly increase your chance to get level reduction on your weapon. It's because it'll, it'll reduce, there's like five, five different roles that could roll like, uh, like some type of CC ability, like the mobilize, freeze, stun. Uh, if you get one of those, it'll move like five roles out of your pool of roles, and then it increases your chance of getting the reduced level requirement. So that's another thing. 
And that's pretty much it. Then at level 60, you craft the level 70 weapon, and you do the same exact thing. You try to get like a reduction of CC, or a CC effect on there, and then you get the level reduction on it. Okay, so now where are we going to be farming? That is the good question. So we know what to do with getting gear. We know what to do with difficulty. Where are we going to go and farm? So basically bounties. Bounties in the act. So notable bounties uh, that are really easy. Do act one. Uh, basically cathedral level. Uh, like pretty much any bounties in act one. Uh, stay away from boss kills. So Hall's Agony, Cathedral are really good, and Weeping Hollow is because of mob types that are there, super easy, very, fairly efficient to kill, and the, the experience reward is, is good. It's, it's very good, and it's efficient. Okay, another thing you want to be keeping a lookout for is Cursed Chess events. Cursed Chess events will be annotated uh, by the name Cursed. So you see right here, it says the, Clurs the Cursed Glacier. Uh, you don't want to do this one. Uh, pretty much stay in Act 1 and Act 4 for the Cursed Chess events, and you're going to be wanting the wave-based events. So these wave-based events are in Act 1. It's the Cursed Bellows and Hall's Agony, the Cursed Cellars and Old Runes. So Old Runes will be a spawn there, right? Cursed Bellows and Hall's Agony, uh, the Cursed Court and Cathedral Level 3, and then Cursed Grove and Field of Misery, and then the Cursed Hatchery and the Spider Clave. So keep, in, keep a lookout for any like Cursed Chess events. The wave-based ones are right, so the ones where you have to kill like five waves at a time are right, but the best ones are the ones where you have to kill 100 mobs. Those are absolutely amazing. They'll almost give you like one level on hard difficulty every single time you clear it. Also, in addition to like doing these bounties and doing the Cursed Chess events, you want to utilize being in a four-player group. Every single, every single person, in addition to yourself, that's in your group, will give you the strength and numbers buffs. What this buff does is give you 10% experience gain. Also, notably, every single time an additional person joins your group, it doesn't increase mob health by 100%. It only increases mob health by 50%. So it makes it even more efficient there. If everyone's on the same gear level and the mobs are only gaining 50% health per person, why would you not get that free experience? So anyways, that is it for the level 70 tips. Hopefully you guys learned something. And good luck in season two. May the force be with you. Have a face.